Miami's passing game was fifth in the ACC in 2022. They returned quarterback Tyler Van Dyke. He's obviously looking for a bounce back year in terms of some individual statistics with him. The key will be the wide receivers. David, we're going to talk about who will be Miami's top six wide receivers this season. But first off, before we get into those six, I just want to put up a graphic right here so people can see where Miami's wide receivers rank among their career receptions. Because essentially a lot of the things with college football is, you know, it goes to essentially the spots, everything kind of goes to the veteran guys. So here's a look at the six guys with career receptions at Miami and other schools. You see right here with Frank Latson leading the way with 58, Brashard Smith 47. And you see some other names in here. Also Tyler Harrell, you know, comes over a transfer. He's been at Louisville and Alabama. He's got 22. So these are the six. Is it just going to be these six? Or do you feel like somebody can kind of insert in? Because there's some there's five guys essentially left off of this list right now. Yeah, it's, that's an interesting place to start. And uh, let me be clear. This is my thoughts on what I think Miami will do, not necessarily what I would do. Um, but I think it's easy, at least for me, it was easy to name the top four. If you're projecting it out, I'd go Colby Young, number one. Uh, I think Restrepo's number two. He's Tyler Van Dyke's guy in the slot. I would go Tyler Harrell as the third guy. Uh, Miami needs that speed threat. Jacoby George right there with Tyler Harrell to rotate in for him. I go Brashard Smith fifth as your backup to Xavier Restrepo. And then sixth, I'd go Isaiah Horton. Uh, Just seems like he has more momentum right now in terms of being that backup to Colby Young rather than Frank Latson. I do respect the veteran aspect you're referring to with Frank Latson. Um, It just seems like, quite frankly, that uh, the staff would prefer to go in that Isaiah Horton direction. Uh, But certainly... Frank Latson has an opportunity during fall camp to try it, to try and go win that job. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a couple guys that I think are a little bit different. I think these are two guys that are going to be inserted in that six uh, opposite of what you said. And I do think, you know, I've said this before and I, I'm going to stick with it. I think Nathaniel Joseph by the end of the season will be one of Miami's six best receivers. I think he's going to be better than Burchard Smith. I understand the season that Burchard had last year, filling in for Restrepo. 33 catches, but however, he did not score a touchdown. And I know other receivers have had that issue ascent in a sense of some some yards or some catches without the touchdowns. Mike Harley finally got over that and got in the end zone when he was at Miami, and certainly he had that the high productive se- the career. But I just think Nathaniel Joseph with his playmaking ability, I don't know if it's going to be early on, but I think eventually he's going to be one of Miami's six best. I think if you're looking at some slot position stuff, I think it's going to be Xavier and, and, and Ray Ray Joseph there. And then also, you know, the other difference, I do think I do have Harrell also better than Jacoby George there. And I think that might surprise some people. But when you watch the highlights of Tyler Harrell, what he was able to do at Louisville, we've just not seen that from Jacoby George at Miami. You know, similar in age, but we've just – I now, I think George – has potential. I think he's essentially going to get that first crack because I think opportunities will go to either returners or guys that were there longer and and Harold arriving in the summer. I think he's got some catch up to do and I think Jacoby will get the opportunity. But I think if we're looking at that spot, I still have, I have Harold that's going to be better than George, more productive. I think he's going to get in the end zone, bigger catches because we've seen that Uh, again at Louisville. He did that. Alabama dealt with some injuries and didn't have that production, but I think he's going to be a high productive guy. I think Colby Young, and I've got Frank Latson backing him up. So that's the difference. I think Latson, you know, I understand that he, you know, regardless of his recruiting ranking, what he did at Clemson, you know, he still had 27 catches last year. He only had the one touchdown. You'd like to see that bigger production. I think he, even though he got more starts and essentially more playing time than maybe a guy like Colby, Colby just had those bigger play, bigger games, individual games. Frank just didn't have that standout game, but he was just kind of a steady guy once he got going in, in the passing game. I think he's going to kind of slot in there with, with Young working in that spot there, essentially the X. But, you know, those are the six. I think Isaiah Horton, I think he, for me, he's a guy that I like, and we've talked about him, David, over the summer. And, and for me, it's just like, yeah, but is he going to beat out those guys? And I, I think for a guy that only played four games last season, his freshman year, just the one catch, to make that big jump the way that these other guys, you know, essentially unseat these other guys, I just don't see that happening for Isaiah. But I do think he can kind of maybe be a somewhat productive guy outside looking in. Yeah, and I think I think your list is fair. I agree with you on Ray Ray uh, Joseph's talent. I just personally have a hard time seeing the staff go that direction in the first 
six, seven games. I, I agree with you, though. Over the last month, I wouldn't be surprised if Ray Ray gets in there more. Um, it's just for me, Brashard Smith played over 300 snaps, uh, second returning receiver in terms of yardage, uh, leading returning receiver in terms of receptions. Uh, but I do agree with your overall point that Ray Ray is a uh, more talented player. I'm curious, Chris, one thing I'm always interested in with wide receiver position is where do you kind of drop off the rotation? Because I think it's fair to say six, but I'm a fan of playing your better ones, more snaps. So I'm curious, like, where would you, would you make that line of demarcation and and where would you do that? Because to me, I think you go, I don't know, Colby Young, Xavier Restrepo, Tyler Harrell, to me are your clear cut three tops. And I would give them the vast majority of the snaps, understanding in the modern day, you do have to rotate. So you would cut it more off at three is what you're essentially saying. I I don't know percentage wise, but essentially you'd like to to really stay with your top three. I would. Yeah. You know, and and usually I'm like that. Essentially, usually I'm like that with almost all positions. I'm a big believer in that. The one thing I would say, David, though, with this particular group, it's not as clear cut. And I do believe in trusting guys and essentially if the, if a guy beats out a guy, then essentially make him your starter, you know, make him the guy that gets them when you say starter, but make that guy get the most reps. And I could see that happening. I just, is there really a, a clear cut uh, advantage? And, and maybe the biggest one, but would be a Harold George combo. Um, you know, right. but you know, even when we look at Restrepo, you know, we're all assuming he's going to be in there. And I, the reason why I still have him among the top six, why I think he'll start and, and just kind of clarify. Yeah. Colby Young, Restrepo, Harold would be my three starters. You know, with Restrepo, he only has two starts. You know, Michael Redding, a guy that we haven't talked about, actually has more starts in his career than than Restrepo. But Restrepo had those two big games to start out last year. You know, he, he had, you know, the big 100-yard game, but he, had, he got off to a really good start. Then he has the injury. And when he came back, he played, but he just wasn't as productive. I just think he's going to be back in there, and I think he's going to be a productive guy. You know, I, 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 you know, to answer your question, I would play six. I, I like that as a line. I, it's essentially a two deep. That's why we talk about six. That's why we even brought up six. It's a, it's really put three on the field and the three backups. I would cut it off at six. You know, and I actually, when you were talking about it, I thought maybe you were going to say, oh, do you stretch it to seven or eight? Would you get a guy in there? Would you get a, for example, if we're not expecting Ray Ray to start kind of in that mix, would you get him in? Would you get a Horton in there? I uh, touched on Redding, you know, those guys. Uh, but you would cut it off, and that's interesting. And I, I do believe it. Maybe if they're productive within a game, you write them out. But uh, but also, I think you know. I think the the thing is, the other three. If we're talking about four, five, and six, I think those four, those three guys can bring something to the table. And as long as they're bringing something to the table, being productive, I think that's important. Now, if the first group's really rolling, you know, Miami's not at a place where they just want. I don't think that they should just automatically go to that second group automatically right. just because it's their time. And I think I don't want to break a flow of a game, a bro- break a, a rhythm. If the, the first three guys got it, look, the thing with receivers too, they get breaks when the defense is on the field. Okay, so if you want to roll out only three or, or less, uh, as long as it's not a long drive and, or, or if you're running deep routes for a guy, for example, a guy like Harrell, if he's running a bunch of nine, a bunch of deep routes, yeah, you get him off the field within the drive. But essentially, you don't always have to, to rotate that second group in. And I think just paying attention to the flow will be important. But that's tough because you do want to make guys happy. You got 11 in the group now. Uh, you don't, you know, if you're cutting it to three, you're going to make some people unhappy. Yeah, when I say cut it to three, I mean, the top three, 50 to 45 snaps, and then the rest, 15 to 20. So maybe that's a bad way of putting it. But uh, I would just make the rotation uh, not as heavy uh, as I would just play your guys. Last thing, do you feel like this group is better year over year? Yeah, you would, you would think so. I think, that, I think the biggest thing you're looking at is a guy like Colby Young. You know, if we did this last year, if we did a top right. six, he wouldn't have been in the top six. I mean, he yep. frankly just – honestly, if we, like, look at it, I didn't think he looked better in preseason practice than Isaiah Horton, who just got there. Yeah. And Isaiah didn't play, much, as we touched on. You know, Colby just wasn't that that guy. Now, he became it, and I don't think it, I don't think it's one of those situations where you look at his catches, you know, the, the season he had, the 32 catches, the 376, the five touchdowns. You know, he had those two big games against Virginia Tech and Duke, and I don't think you look at it like, well, where was he? You know, why didn't the coaches put him in earlier? I, I don't think he was ready. I, I think I don't Agreed. think the coaches necessarily messed up on that. They had other guys. They had a guy like Frank. So, 
yeah, he would have been on the outside looking in. And, and you know, I, I think with a guy like Colby, I, I think that's going to be the biggest thing is can't not – well, can he get 110 and 127 every game? No, that, that's unrealistic, I think. But I think, you know, can there be better year over year? I think that's the thing you look at is a guy like him for a whole season, understands what he's doing, a lot more confidence going into a season. Tyler Van Dyke has spoken highly about Colby, and I would pay attention to that in terms of the connection, which is why I think Colby will lead this team in receiving. But I think, you know, I touched on Jacoby George, you know, you know, I, I do. While I think Harold can, is going to be better this season, I think George can certainly be good too. You know, we've not seen him really put together a full season quite yet either in his first two years. So I think Jacoby has a chance to to be even better. So we'll see. But I think they can. I think this can be an improved group. I think Restrepo is going to be better than it was a year ago. Broussard, you know, got a lot of catches. I think you know he can find the end zone. So and then as as I mentioned, some of these newcomers. So with Ray Ray Joseph, who I think will make an impact. Yeah, I like this group more year over year. I think the roles are more defined uh, compared to what we knew going into last year. And, and finally, too, I think this new system, this new offense is more wide receiver friendly, and they should be more productive uh, because of that. So we'll see how it all plays out this season.